So if you're watching this video, you're probably at least passively interested in Inktober. So I'm going to go over some things you might want to think about, like your supplies, your inspiration, and your expectations for the challenge. So hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Inktober 2017. Maybe I'll give you something better to look at than this boring um, chipboard here. So Inktober 2017. What is Inktober firstly? If you're maybe new to art or maybe just new to the idea of Inktober, what is it? So Inktober is a challenge that was created by Jake Parker and basically in the 31 days of October you're supposed to create some sort of ink drawing each day. There are a few rules for the challenge but there are only four and number one is make a drawing in ink, number two is post it online, number three is hashtag it with Inktober and Inktober 2017, and number four is repeat every day. But there's no prizes for this challenge and this challenge is more, from what I understand, just about getting you into good habits of drawing each and every day and inking each and every day and to kind of set up a healthy drawing habit because a lot of artists don't sketch and draw enough. So that's kind of what Inktober is about. And I know a lot of people aren't even going to be using traditional mediums. They're going to be using digital mediums. And that is super cool too. But today I just wanted to share with you how I'm preparing in the last few days of September for Inktober. And so I thought I would share with you some of the ink tools that I might be using for Inktober. And I'll start with some of the cheapest ones because once again Inktober isn't about going out and buying really expensive products that you've never used before. Although if you have the money and the desire to do that, that is awesome. But it's more about getting you to do art. So one of the tools I might be using this month could be something like this little big pen. But this, oh this is from Tokyo Disney. So I stole this off my fiance's uh, desk. He um, was in the Navy and he got to go to Japan and he visited Tokyo Disney while he was there. Another tool, and these are pens that I really like for art in general and I do actually use these. They're a uniball pen and they're just kind of like a fine liner pen. Now the reason I really like these is they're water resistant. So if you put a drop of water on it, it's not gonna bloom all over your paper the Sharpie. Um, I'll be using both fine and thick liner and I'll be using these a lot when I do printmaking. So these are ink. So if you got Sharpies, you got tools for Inktober. And I will probably also be using some of my Microns. I got these for Christmas, which was exciting because I did not have any Microns before. And I think I'm going to pronounce these correctly, but they're Stabilo pens. Finally for my birthday, um, someone listened to my pleas and got me a set of these, and here's like another one, just kind of hiding over here. And these are really fun for writing. Now, the one thing I will say about these, these are not waterproof whatsoever. If you, with a couple hours of dry time, water will make them bleed and bloom profusely. So that could be a very interesting effect, but it's not something that I typically go for. So if you want to line with these or do any kind of like top art or anything, you have to do it after all of your other wet work is done. My white, my white pen. So I use this for kind of like touch-ups to add highlights. I like these little guys. So two other things I have and I, well, I guess I have a few more than two, but um, this is one of the inks I have. This is a black India ink. I totally got this from Walmart and it was like three or four dollars. And I thought I wouldn't like it, but I love this ink, guys. It is a waterproof ink. I think it's a little on the sticky side, but, like, I don't really notice that except when I'm using it with, like, um, this ink pen. I don't really notice it, but I, I kind of do a little bit with this. But um, it is completely waterproof. So if you're doing a wash over this, if you want to use this for, like, your lining and then do all your washes... So my best friend's currently living in Italy and I had the great fortune to be able to visit her and I got this when I was in Venice. Um, it's just, it was made in the Venetian Lagoon. Um, so it's like Venetian glass, little pen. I think it's pretty, but um, I got that and some extra little pen nibs for it and I am no expert in this. I embarrass myself most of the time when I use this. So I guess get ready for that because it's gonna be embarrassing, but these are apparently antique nibs too. 
according to the guy at the shop who sold these to me. So that may or may not be true. And I have a couple of them. This I got in Italy. It came with my pen. I have a couple of these that are just like, they came in a, a writing set that I got, gosh, probably back in 2008. They're still wet, of course, but um, they're not waterproof. And I'm not like thrilled with them, but I'll probably use them a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. And then I got my favorite thing. Look at this. It's so beautiful. Um, this is brand new, so I haven't used it in any art projects. I did a swatch of it, and I'll show you that in a second. But this is such a beautiful, <laughs> sparkly golden ink. And I want to try and stay mostly black and white for my Inktober palette. I might use color here and there, so that might go out the window. But I was thinking, like, oh, this would be, like, perfect to, like, accentuate my black and white images here and there. Just a little bit of gold. And I'll show you the swatch I made. Ooh. That's very bright. But, like, look at that. Like, look. This this is the gold swatch. Hey, that looks like a person. That wasn't intentional at all. Look how beautiful that. So, let's talk about how I'm going to be breaking the rules this October because that's totally happening. Um, I am actually going to be working on printmaking. And I'm going to be working on some linoleum printmaking. I have several really cool ideas for a fairy tale print series that I want to work on and get out. And I'm kind of working on off a theme for this Inktober, and that's kind of like fairy tale Halloween ish theme. I'll talk more about that probably in some of my Inktober videos. But what I'm going to be doing is taking a piece of linoleum, like a blank piece. Oops, sorry, I have some carvings there. A blank piece of linoleum and making a carving like this. It's still technically drawing in ink because I have to draw this original and then I like draw it with a sharpie on here. But then I like carve it out and destroy the original drawing and then I put ink on it and then I print it and it looks something like this. So I mean, technically it's in the spirit of Inktober. It's definitely a very involved project and I'm still technically making an ink drawing so, I don't know. That's kind of breaking the rules a little bit because it's not just a simple ink drawing. It's um, a little bit more involved, but it is ink. See? So it's ink. Is what kind of paper are you going to use? And I actually got this sketchbook because I wanted to try this paper. This is a, oh, can you see it? Strathmore Vision, and it's watercolor paper, 140 pounds. I really like 140 pound paper. Really inexpensive on Dick Blick. This is actually a 9 by 12, and I actually wanted to do maybe like a 5 by 7 scrapbook for Inktober, just to be like, okay, you have a small area to work with. But, uh, of course, I didn't. They didn't have a 5 by 7 But one cool thing about this is you're actually supposed to be able to make your own cover right here. Which is great because this is a 30-page watercolor sketchbook. And this is going to be Inktober number 1 on the cover. And then after that, I'm going to go into the rest of my Inktober. This is what I'm using. But once again, in the spirit of Inktober. Here, I'll put that there. In the spirit of Inktober... You can use whatever you have. So if you just have notebook paper, go for it. If you have printer paper, use that. You don't have to run out and buy a special sketchbook. I do know a lot of people like to have a designated Inktober sketchbook. That way they can like pull it down and be like, oh, this is my Inktober of whatever year. So that's what I wanted for this year was just a designated Inktober sketchbook. But um, if you have just printer paper, Go for it. Use that. That's going to be awesome. You're going to make some cool art. This is about making a drawing every single day for 31 days. Getting in good drawing habits because a lot of artists don't sketch enough. And the only way that you're going to improve as an artist is to sketch and sketch and sketch and sketch. If you can afford to go out and get a sketchbook or if you have paper at your disposal, I would recommend depending on what you're going to use, if you're going to be using ink washes or something like that, to use at least a mixed media paper. Um, mixed medias are usually like 98 pounds, and poundage is just the kind of like the thickness of the paper, how much water. This is the thick paper. It's super thick. It can hold a lot of water. It can stand up to a lot of abuse, and um, this is 140 pound. Mixed media paper is thinner, but it's still much, much thicker than something like my little beat up sketch pad. 
if all you have is printer paper, go for it, or notebook paper. This is just about improving, and I hope that you guys stick around for my Inktober and everybody else's Inktober. I know there's going to be like a lot of Instagrams. Hopefully by the time this video goes up, I will have an art Instagram made. I don't have one yet. I should have one, but I just have like a personal Instagram, and trust me, you guys probably don't want to see that many pictures of my cats, so I'll try and make an art Instagram to link down below if you're interested in that. So I wanted to share with you guys another way that you might want to be preparing for Inktober or think about. It's just kind of go to your older sketchbooks and be like, huh, what do I want to work up maybe into a better project? Like some of these I've been kind of sketching out because I'm kind of like, huh, it would be cool to make some little pumpkin stamps. So I might do that and make some cards during Inktober or I might work on my Medusa drawing, but probably not because I really want to watercolor this. Technically, this is already in Inktober, but it was done in September, so it doesn't count. But um, trying like techniques that you might want to use, so stuff like that. And yeah, I'm talking more, I know. Um, so another great place to get inspiration is from either the official prompt list which is what's on the screen right now so this is a 2017 prompt list or one of the unofficial ones and I have a cool one next it's like a witchy inktober I kind of like the idea of keeping inktober in like the Halloween type spirit which is totally not necessary but that's kind of what I think I'm going for I might not completely stick to that but these are some really cool ideas, like a gemstone witch, that's kind of neat, or a student witch, an undertaker witch. Um, but the important thing is to have some sort of inspiration, because there might be some days where you're just not feeling it, but you want to complete the challenge. So maybe one of these can kind of spur you into a really cool art piece. And this says it's the kids prompt list, but I see a lot of potential for even adults are kids of all ages to make some really cool stuff with this and I was thinking that maybe if you're one of those people who just doesn't deal well with having to pick you could like print some out cut them up put them into a hat and then if you're having a rough day just draw one from a hat so it'll be really important to have like a few fallbacks either maybe things that you want to develop more from previous sketchbooks or prompts that you could kind of fall back on when the going gets tough in the middle of Inktober. So maybe the most important thing is what do you expect from Inktober? Um, are you okay with doing some quick drawings or do you wanna do more involved artworks? And I hope you guys don't mind that I put some pictures of my art in here. I just thought it would be more interesting than a black slide. But what are you expecting from Inktober? If you wanna do really complex, really complete artworks every day for 31 days, make sure you're going to have that time and you're not going to burn out by day three or day four. So many of us have work or we're back in school that just timing our drawings to make sure we're not going to burn out quickly or bite off more than we can chew is going to be an important path for this Inktober. And in fact, I have several days um, and several ideas where it's going to be more of a quick piece of artwork that I'm still going to be happy with, most likely, we'll see. But it'll be a quicker piece of artwork. Um, that way it'll help me balance out those days where I'm doing really complex, really involved things like printmaking, for instance. Um, but hopefully you like this video. If you want to see my Inktober, I'm not sure I'm going to post a video every day. But I will be posting some videos. If you're doing it, I wish you luck. I wish myself luck. 31 days of inking. That's going to be a lot. So... Thanks for watching this video. I ran long. I talk a lot. I talk a lot. But I'll see you in Inktober day one, most likely. Okay, but really, I was just playing with some of this gold ink. These are just some, like, sketches. How insanely gorgeous is this gold ink? I want to cover everything in my life with this gold ink. That's so shiny. That's so shiny.